this is Randy Wyckoff, the Dean of the College of Public Health at East Tennessee State University. And I'm pleased to provide the weekly COVID pandemic update, number 98, with data accurate through March 31st, 2022. This week, I'm gonna address the same question I addressed last week, which is, is the pandemic still slowing down? And then answer the question, what is the new guidance on a second booster for the vaccine? Well, is the pandemic still slowing down? Well, as you recall, we saw this massive Omicron spike in cases worldwide, and it started to come down very rapidly. Then it starts to level off. And as you can see here, the leveling off is happening at a much higher level than at any previous time in the pandemic. Now, we always treat cases a little cautiously because cases can be driven by how much testing is done and, and so on. So we typically follow hospitalizations or deaths. And globally, we're seeing a nice decline in the daily number of deaths such that now we're lower than we have been at any time since the initial spike of the pandemic back almost exactly two years ago. Over 6 million deaths to date, and we're still running 4,000 deaths a day. So while these numbers are coming down, 4,000 deaths is, is certainly not out of the woods, if you will. We looked last week at France, Germany, in the United Kingdom with cases on the left and deaths on the right. And what you can see for all three countries there is has been a spike in the number of cases and possibly a slow increase in the number of deaths. The fact that the deaths appear to be coming up, even if very slowly, does suggest that this is something we wanna follow over time because often the US has lagged four to six weeks behind its European counterparts. In the US, uh, we saw the Omicron spike. It came back down well below uh, the highest part of the, the spike. And then in terms of total deaths, we're almost as low as we were last summer and still coming down nicely. We'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that this continues to come down and not start sneaking back up as we're seeing in Europe. Over a million deaths, as we talked about last week, and about 600 deaths a day. In terms of where the, pen, where the infections are in the U.S., again, we saw the very rapid explosion of Omicron cases and almost as rapidly disappearing. And again, we're pretty much out of the woods with a few scattered cases around. Now, again, this does not mean that the pandemic is not going to come back. Uh, in fact, many people assume that we will see, you know, at least an up and down spike, if not the, the kind of dramatic spikes that we've seen in the past. In terms of Tennessee, our Omicron surge was a bit wider. It took a little longer to slow down than the U.S.'s did, but it's come down well below normal. And in terms of deaths, you know, even though this weird reporting pattern, I think we're seeing a reduction. Uh, over 25,000 deaths to date, about 137 deaths last week. Again, if we look at the last few weeks, we see the number of deaths going up and down. I don't believe that's a real phenomenon. I think that is simply a reporting issue. And if you look at that general trend there on the right side of the, of the chart, except for those two spikes, it appears to be coming down. So is the pandemic slowing down? That's hard to say. I would say it has slowed down um, in the U.S. and globally, deaths are coming down, but there's at least a hint that we may be starting to see a slight increase in our European colleagues, so we'll keep an eye on that. So a lot of news this last week about the FDA and the CDC recommending a second booster. Uh, the FDA has authorized a second booster dose of either Pfizer or Moderna for individuals, older individuals, and those who are immune compromised. Uh, the, the FDA said that their logic is based on evidence of waning perfect, uh, protection over time as, uh, against serious outcomes in older and immune compromised folks and an analysis of available data that we'll discuss in a moment. Shortly after the FDA announcement, the CDC updated its recommendations, again, 
relate basically the same in terms of if, if it's been four months since your first booster, you can get a second if you are over 50 or immune suppressed. There's another part to the CDC guidelines though that didn't get as widely covered. And that is information uh, recommendations for folks who received the J&J vaccine first. And I'm gonna come back to that, but they're recommending now that they may they receive a, a second mRNA booster as well. And I'll show you the data on that. According to the CDC, the data suggests that boosters are safe and people over the age of 50 and four months since their last booster can and should be uh, reboosted, especially if you have underlying conditions. The underlying medical condition is just to remind you are these shown here. These are alphabetical. They're not shown in order of importance. But certainly if you have any ongoing medical condition and you're not sure if you should get a second booster, please talk to your healthcare provider. I suspect that they'll recommend that you do, but it's really between you and them. Now the data behind all of this is interesting. We didn't, we haven't seen the kind of comprehensive data reporting we did when the first emergency use authorizations came out. But according to the FDA, uh, information from Israel had about 700,000 fourth boat doses, which is two boosters, and they had no new safety concerns. And then they looked in a small number, maybe 10 dozen or so healthcare workers, and they saw, saw evidence of neutralizing antibody increases against SARS-CoV-2, as well as the Delta and Omicron variant. Now the Pfizer press release, uh, when they submitted their request to the FDA had a little bit more information. Again, this didn't come from the FDA or CDC, so you take it for what it's worth, but they said an analysis of over a million folks in Israel who had no known infection and got an additional booster dose. These data show that rates of confirmed infections were two times lower and rates of severe illness were four times lower in those who had a second dose, uh, second booster compared to those who just had one booster dose. Now the, the J and J data uh, is actually quite interesting. This was reported in the Morbidity Mortality Weekly report, the MMWR. Um, and what they said was in terms of effectiveness at preventing ER visits, one J and J dose was about 24% effective. Now this is could be a year out from when it was given. Two was about 54%, so that's good. One J and J and one mRNA, either one is 79% compared to three mRNA, about 83% in preventing ER visits. In terms of preventing hospitalizations, about the same numbers um, with three mRNA, about 90% effective. So the pandemic maybe has slowed down in the United States, but maybe is leveling off, at least in terms of cases globally, we'll keep an eye on deaths in Europe. And then in terms of the new guidance, if you are over 50 and have a chronic condition, um, you should consider getting a second booster dose. A great deal more information about COVID-19 on the College of Public Health website. If you're sharing this video with anyone or you'd like to, please let us know. We're happy to add anyone to the listserv. I'd like to thank Derry Young for editing, producing, and posting this video. And as always, if you have any questions about what's in this week's update or any other question about the pandemic more generally, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next week, please be well.